Welcome back, y'all, and today we're getting to know one of the newest members of the Glowfish brand, Corydoras. With how popular Corydoras are amongst new and seasoned fish keepers, it's no surprise that they would be on the list of new glowfish. Already coming in a wide variety of patterns and colorations, these fish are now going to be available in electric green and sunburst orange. Now, the Glowfish brand has caused quite the stir in the fish keeping community, and they continue to do so. As many people in the hobby are opposed to the new genetically modified fish, the biggest problem, however, is that many people purchasing these fish are not familiar with the actual species and only choose them for their bright colorations. But whether you choose the Glowfish brand version or the plain Jane old fashioned natural version with their peaceful disposition, relatively small size and scavenger nature, Corydoras often make a great addition to a community tank. Now, Corydoras are considered a schooling or shoaling fish, so you'll want to get at least five or six of them so that they will feel more secure and happy in your aquarium. And the minimum tank size recommended for Corydoras is 20 gallons. But of course, bigger is always, always better. Smaller tanks tend to require more frequent maintenance than larger tanks, so often going with a bigger tank is going to be easier in the long run. Now, quarries are scavengers that use their small little whisker-like barbs to find food on the bottom of your aquarium. So when choosing your substrate, you'll want to choose either a smooth sand or gravel. You'll want to avoid putting any sharp substrate or decor in your tank as this could damage the barbs on their face and injure your fish. Now, planted aquariums are always a great idea when it comes to Corydoras. Not only will this give them a more naturalistic environment, but it'll help keep your quarries from getting stressed. These fish tend to be a little bit more on the shy side, so having plenty of hiding places will keep them healthier and happier overall. As a bonus, plants also help to keep the nitrate levels lower in your aquarium, which means less frequent maintenance for you. Now, Corydoras can handle a pretty wide range when it comes to temperature of between 72 and 80 degrees is going to be ideal. You may or may not need a heater for them if temperatures will fluctuate too much without one, or if your temperatures will drop too low. These fish also do not tend to do well in waters that get you warm or above 82 degrees. So you'll also want to keep that in mind. Cory catfish also do best between neutral to slightly acidic water with a pH between 6.5 and 7.8, and they tend to prefer soft to only slightly hard water. These fish also do best with low to medium flow filtration, with sponge filters often being favored amongst fish keepers. Honestly though, sponge filters tend to be pretty great overall for most fish. They're low in cost and they do a great job. Now when setting up your Corydoras tank for the first time, you'll want to try to cycle the tank before adding your fish. Cycling your tank beforehand will allow good bacteria to flourish that will help aid in taking care of any toxins produced from fish waste or fish food. For more information about cycling your tank, I will put links to my nitrogen cycle videos in the description box below. Now, once again, I must emphasize that Corydoras are considered a schooling fish, so you will want to have at least five to six of them in your aquarium. And when it comes to tank mates, Corydoras are quite peaceful, but always keep their small size in mind because if it fits in a fish's mouth, it's food. Common tank mates kept with quarry catfish are Neon Tetras, Swordtail, Zebra Danios, Amano Shrimp, Rosboras, and Platys. But of course, there are also many, many other species of fish and shrimp and snails that get along quite well with quarries. Now, when it comes to diet, Corydoras are considered omnivores and they are not at all picky eaters. Now, although they are considered bottom feeders, they will also come to the surface for food as well. Keep in mind, while these fish will eat some algae, that is not going to be their primary source of food. These fish will also need a varied diet of high quality sinking pellets, sinking wafers, and live or frozen bloodworms, along with some blanched vegetables. So anyway, guys, that's all I really have for y'all today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!